Hello everyone, my name is Dorota Czerny. I am an instructor for GUE since 2005. And what I would like to talk to you about today is how a small piece of equipment changed the quality of my diving. So the hero of the day will be a backplate and it will be a small backplate to which I will return in a second. So let's define some parameters here because uh, I'm a person of a certain size and this talking is rel related to a people of a certain size. So I, am, I consider myself a small person and I am 166 centimeters tall, which in feet I believe is 5.4. So if you are a person within that range, plus minus maybe 10 centimeters, this small backplate can change quite a lot in regards of your positioning in the water, trim and how easy you can accomplish those things. Additionally to that, we will not be talking only about the things, how the backplate can influence your position underwater, but as well how it can positively influence even your back and the quality of carrying heavy equipment, because this is what backplate does. It just connects everything together and then you put it on and carry the heavy gear around. So what do we have here? So let's set up the scene for the act. So I have here all halcyon backplates because this is the equipment that I know and I dive. So here I have a standard sized backplate, which you can recognize by the slots it has. It's an aluminum backplate. Then I have another one, which is as well aluminum. And this is the smaller sized backplate, which does not have the slots. So this would be the first indicator that you are looking at a smaller halcyon backplate. Uh, talking on about the backplates, of course you can have a stainless steel small backplate, you can have aluminium backplate which are here and then you can have as well a carbon backplate which is a quite new thing and to this I will return later on when we talk about weight. Uh, if you look at the sizes of it, if we compare one to the other and I would like to make a certain alignment of that backplate because then it will show you what I mean when I'm talking about how the backplate fits on a diver's back. So if we align those backplates and I will align them by the slots where the harness, the waist strap is coming in. So if we align them here, and I think I'm, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, so you can see that the smaller backplate is much shorter in a way on the top and it's much narrower as well. So. I can have another alignment when I'm aligning the slots for the twin sets or the slot for a single tank adapter because it's as well a standard distance. And then you can see that we are losing a little bit of space here on the bottom and the rest is of course the same. So how does it relate to us? And now is the third piece that I would like to introduce is our diver, let's call it George. And I think I call him George because I don't know anyone personally with that name, <laughs> but anyway. So if we look, what I would like to talk a little bit now is about something that we call a positive trim and a negative trim. And very generally speaking, this is, uh, and I hope I hold it straight, uh, this is a neutral trim or flat trim. So this is the position that we would like to be. And most of the divers would like to be there with relatively little effort. So not really struggling to stay there. So have the equipment aligned and your body tension there just to allow you to be in that position very comfortably. So now we will not be talking about holding your body in a certain position because it's a totally different talk. I would like to only concentrate on the equipment. So now if this is a flat trim, this we would call a negative trim. So where the legs are down and the head is up. So then we are coming back to a flat or neutral trim and this would be a positive trim where your shoulders are lower than your knees or the legs are higher. So these are the two extremes that normally we would refer if we are talking about trim, not referring to the flat and neutral one. Negative trim, so trim like this, very often people would say that you are or a diver is in the trim because his legs are heavy. And it seems kind of obvious because if we would just put more weight here, the diver will just tilt like this. So the opposite very often is being told that if the diver is in a positive trim, so that way, it means that he is too heavy on the front and then the weight just tilts him 
to the front. Of course, it is correct. And if you would put weight here, the diver will go like this. And if you put weight here, the diver will go that way. But very often, if somebody is diving that way, it doesn't mean that he has too heavy legs. It might mean that his legs are too light. Because what he is doing, really, when he is in that position and he feels super uncomfortable, he starts to kick with his legs and he tries to offset that problem being like that. And it's much more comfortable if you have very light feet, like in a dry suit. And the other thing is, the, the, other, so the other situation is that if we are in a positive trim, it might mean that my legs are too heavy. Because if I'm like this and I feel my legs are really sinking, then I will try to work them up and I will over-exaggerate and be swimming like that. So I'm talking now here about positive and negative trim in a context of a backplate. Because backplate does put tanks on my back. So I will try to hold it and not to lose it. So, if just use your imagination and think this is a tank, a twin set, a breeder, whatever you are carrying there. So, depending where these tanks are and how heavy they are, because we have regulators here in front, we have some sort of a backplate here, and how the tanks are positioned on your back will influence how your trim will be. So, one of the things that people are having problems with, reaching the valves, <laughs> this is another thing that we put into the equation. So normally the solution for that would be just to bring the tanks quite high up because then you might think, okay, now it's easier for me to reach to the valves. But in fact, what it does, it doesn't allow the diver to look forward. So he ends up diving like this, which doesn't solve his problem. Another solution might be, okay, I'm swimming like this and I feel that my feet are now quite light because of quite a lot of weight in front of my head or in front of me. So then I will be swimming or I will have the tendency to tilt forward. So my solution could be to move the tanks more behind to balance it a little bit more out. We do have now what I introduce is concepts of positive and negative trim, how my position might influence it, how the position of the tanks, and remember tanks are always including a backplate, can influence it. And how the thing that we see a diver being like this might mean totally different things. So it does not mean that the diver is too heavy in the end, so too heavy on the fins. It might be that he is too light because he is just overcompensating this position. George here now has a problem with positive trim, which means he feels that he is much too heavy on the front and his legs are much too light. What would be a solution for him or what could he change on his equipment to reduce a little bit the way that he is having here in the front. Of course, one of the things that he can do, he can go from the standard stainless steel backplate that most of the divers are using. This backplate is weighing about three kilos. And then the first stage to reduce that would be to go to an aluminum backplate, which reduces the weight almost three times because the aluminum backplate is weighing around one. And then if you can go even th further, then you can take a carbon backplate, which is the one that is here, which reduces it again almost three times to approximately 300 grams. Additionally to that, it's not only changing the materials from which the backplates are made, but as well changing the size. So if I am taking a small carbon backplate, I'm really quite drastically reducing it from a stainless steel standard size backplate if I'm using a small carbon backplate. Of course, it's not the solution for everyone, because if you are a very tall person, the small backlight, it's not very comfortable, and it's as well probably not necessary. We talked about positive trim, which means a diver who potentially has too much weight in front of his body, and he is tilting. So now let's talk about a diver who has a negative trim. And here, one of the reasons that the negative negative trim can be there, it's not even related to having legs too heavy or having legs too light, like we have described before, but where the tanks are positioned on his body. Because if his tanks are too high and he cannot really lift his head to look forward, the natural thing to do would be just to go into a negative trim to see what is in front. And how the tanks are positioned on the diver's back is really quite much 
if not only related to how the backplate and the harness is set up. So now I would like to talk a little bit what the benefit of a smaller backplate would be on positioning the tanks on a body of a diver who has a smaller posture like myself. The issue with positioning tanks on diver back is as well related to or brings a very negative consequence if the backplate is not assembled or it's not adjusted properly because the diver will carry the tanks on the surface in the wrong way which might lead really to a neck or back issues. And that's my example because I have been carrying tanks wrong for quite a long time and I do have neck and back issues so I would like you to be able to prevent it by having a proper equipment for a proper posture of a diver. If you now look at that back plate, and I will try to put it on, you can imagine that if I have my tanks too high, the first thing that will come to my back is that I need to bring them lower. It's not really very rocket science, and I can do that, or one of the ways to do it, is to extend the straps or the shoulder straps on my harness, which is a solution because the tanks will become lower, but it introduces a second problem that I would like you to avoid. So if you can have a look, this is a standard backplate and it's adjusted for myself because as you can see I can still here behind reach and touch the top of the backplate but if you look from the side the waist strap is not really on my waist because it's on my hips my waist is more or less here so now I might have my tanks low on my back it might allow me to lift the head and it might allow me to have a very nice flat trim. What, what problem it creates is that if I'm carrying tanks on the surface and they are heavy, I will be carrying them wrong because I will be carrying them on the hips or in fact I will be carrying it on my shoulders. And most of the time it doesn't look really very nice but you will see the smaller posture divers walking a little bit like this with the neck really extended forward because they bear all of the weight on the shoulders. And we, I really encourage everybody to try to prevent it. Now I will take the second back plate, which is a smaller back plate. So I'll take this off. Let's put that on. And this one is as well already adjusted for my size. So you can see behind here that again I can reach to the top and now here you can see that the waist strap is really on my waist which would allow me if I'm having it really nice and tight as it should be to bear all of the weight here on my hips which you can even see that releases the shoulders and the weight that I carry on my shoulders quite much. We have Nigar here to help us a little bit to show you the difference between a small back plate and a big back plate on a smaller size person like us. So Nigar, if you can turn your back to me. So now uh, I would like to show you how a standard sized back plate would fit on her back. I will put my hand on her waist and my hand will be as well in line with the slots for the waist strap on a harness. So this is a standard back plate. Her waist is here. So you can see where the back plate would be on her back. And then you can see as well how high the top of the backplate would be, which, would, which indicates how high the tanks would be, which would be quite high. Now if I compare it to a small backplate, and the same here with my head and her waist, this backplate fits much more better because now the top of the backplate is much lower, so the tanks as well will be lower. She will be able to carry the heavy tanks nicely on her waist, and the tanks will be much better positioned than comparing to a standard sized backplate. Now we have brought a taller person to the screen, Mark, and we'll do the same experiment with the small and big backplate. Nigar, thank you. Mark, can you face the back to me? And we start with the standard backplate with the same experiment. So waist will be going around his waist, and you can see where the top of the back plate is more or less here and then if you would add the tanks they would be in a quite nice position for Mark here. 
if I would compare it now to a small back plate and put it where the waist should be, you can see that this back plate is definitely too small because now his tanks or the top of the back plate is more or less here and the tanks will be really very low. So one of the challenges that Mark Foshu would have is to be able to reach to his valves because the back plate is just too low for him. So obviously that type of a back plate is not designed really for that sized people. <laughs> so in that case, a standard back plate would be much more proper. So far we have been talking about the differences between a big or a standard size and a small back plate in regards of its length. So now I would like to point out that the smaller back plate is as well narrower than the standard one and I would like to show you what a difference does it make for a diver of my size to have a back plate a little bit narrower. So first I will put the standard back plate on and then show you where the shoulder straps are and I will just leave it that way. So you can see that the shoulder straps are quite outside of my shoulders. And very often what can be seen is that the shoulders are very easily sliding off a smaller size shoulder person. So carrying tanks, again, is not really very convenient. And this is related that the straps, they are quite wide on my shoulders. Now if I would compare it to the smaller back plate, you can see that the shoulder straps are closer to my neck, which means that I will carry the weight in a much better position because I will be really carrying them, the tanks on my shoulders. And as well, it will not be so easy for the harness to slip off my shoulders because the, the harness is sitting much better. What we just covered is how a small back plate can positively influence a diver in a variety of ways. So first of all, we have talked about the weight and how gradual the weight can be reduced by using steel, aluminum, carbon back plates, and additionally on top of that, reducing the sizes of it. Uh, the context of the weight was brought up in the, with the problem of a diver who is having issues with his trim and how we can, by reducing the weight in front of the diver, change his trim as well. The second thing that we have covered was how the length of the back plate. So this diameter or this distance can influence the position of the tanks on diver's back in relation to this diver's back size. So a smaller person would be much better off with a smaller sized back plate. And a person which is much taller, like we had Mark here, would use a standard back plate because then it would help to position the tanks in a much proper way. The third thing that we covered is the feature of the smaller back plate that uh, saying that it's narrower, which was allowing for the shoulder straps to be aligned differently on uh, divers' shoulders and allow to carry the tanks in a much more convenient way and as well providing or not allowing the straps to slide off the shoulders. With all of these three features, I would say that the small back plate is a piece of equipment which is very often not known not everybody is aware that there is a something like a small back plate. I would say that the, and the, I have met in my own career while teaching, I have met quite many smaller sized people that struggled with trim, that struggled with uh, carrying the tanks. And especially if you think about a smaller person who is carrying a lot of weight, it's really, it might be a little bit of physical struggle as well. So we as an instructors or people who teach should help them to promote a better posture and not to injure them potentially in the future. So thank you very much for participating in that small tutorial on a small back plate. If you would have more questions, you are always free to ask any of your local GUI instructors or contact us directly on the email that you are seeing now on the screen. So thank you for listening, until your next dive.